Okay, so in this video, we will consider the so-called normal distribution. This will be the first example that we consider of a continuous random variable, a continuous distribution. And this will be for us by far the most important distribution in this course. So, what is the random variable? Well, we usually write x, and we write a little squiggly line to say x follows the given distribution. So we write normal for the normal distribution. And there are two parameters to the distribution. The first parameter is the mean, which we denote by mu. And the second parameter is sigma, the standard deviation. So this means that the random variable x follows the normal distribution with a mean of mu and a deviation of sigma. And this random variable can take on any real number as value. So the range of x goes from negative all the way up to positive infinity. And a question is, in the case of a continuous random variable, how do we compute probabilities? Well, we have to look at the corresponding density function, and all it is is the following. So you have your axis for the x values, and the mean is mu, that's the average value of the distribution, and the function, it looks a bit like a bell. It's usually also sometimes called the bell-shaped distribution, or you may have heard a bell curve. So it looks a little bit like this. It is the properties, it is completely symmetric about the mean. So if you reflect this half of the function about the mean, you'll get the other half. So it's perfectly symmetric about the mean. And the deviation, again, will tell you on average how far will the values fall from the average value. So with a big deviation, the curve would be kind of flatter with a small deviation, the curve would be really, really close to zero, and there'd be a peak around the average value. And the question is, with this function, with this distribution, how do we then use this curve, the normal curve, to find probabilities with respect to the random variable? So what if you asked, what is the probability? Let's do it here. What is the, or, yeah, let's do it here, the probability, let's say that x is between a and b. Well, the interval from a and b will give you an interval on the x-axis. Suppose a is here and b is here. Well, consider now this portion of the curve only. And when you have a continuous random variable, the probability that x ranges over the interval from a to b actually is the area under the distribution curve between x equals a and x equals b. So the probability that the random variable falls between a and b actually is equal to the area under the curve between a and b. So between x equals a and x equals b. And this is how you compute the probability that a random variable that is continuous, that it lies between values a and b, this is simply the area below the distribution curve from a to b. It's worth noting if you ask, for example, what about the probability that x equals a fixed value, say c. Well, suppose c was here. Well, from c to c, you have no area, right? All you have is a line. And the area of a line is zero. So the probability that x equals a single value 
actually is equal to 0 always. The only problem with this is as the mean changes and the deviation changes, you'll ha have a different curve, a different distribution curve, and that's a bit of a problem. The question is, can we somehow find one single example of the normal distribution that relates to all of the others? And the answer is yes, it is called the standard normal distribution. So here's the result. So if x is a normal, a normal random variable with a mean of mu and a deviation of sigma, we can change x so it becomes a very special normal random variable. So here's the theorem. So if x is a normal random variable with a mean of mu and a deviation of sigma, then we can transform x the following way. We can form a new random variable. So we can take x, subtract from x its mean, its average value, and divide the whole thing by the standard deviation. This we will always call z. And why z? Well, because the nice thing is, if you take any random variable that is normal with any given mean and any given deviation, if you subtract from x the mean, divide by the standard deviation, you will always get a normal random variable, and the mean will be equal to 0, and the deviation will be equal to 1. And this has a special name. It is called the standard normal random variable. So the action of subtracting the mean and dividing by sigma, the deviation is called standardizing the random variable x. So this is the standard normal random variable, or the standard distribution. So the idea is, if you ever want a probability about a random variable that is normal, no matter what the mean and the deviation, standardize, and then you can always use the single normal distribution with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. Before we consider examples, let's look at a few more theorems about transforming normal random variables. So here's a second theorem. What if we have, let's say, n normal random variables with all of the same mean all of the same standard deviations. So suppose that we say we let x1, x2, up to xn all be normal random variables with the same mean of mu and the same deviation of sigma. So this is our assumption. We'll assume that each random variable is independent from the other. Then well, the first result is, if you add these random variables, if you do x1 plus x2 plus up to the nth one, xn, this will also be a normal random variable. The only question is, well, what is the mean of this random variable, and what is its standard deviation? Well, before we enter it, let's actually derive it. The mean of this random variable, if you remember, is the expected value. So if you ask, what is the expected value of this sum? If we assume that we have independence, that is the sum of the individual expected values, But by assumption, each random variable from x1 to xn has a mean of mu. So this is mu plus mu plus mu n times. So all we get is 
n mu. So the mean of the sum is n times the individual mean. Where we have to be careful is for the deviation. Let us find the variance first of the sum, right? If you remember, the variance has the same property as the expected value. If we assume that we have independence, the variance of the sum will be the sum of the individual variances. So this would be variance of x1 plus variance of x2 through, whoops, x2 through the variance of xn. Well, be careful here. This is the standard deviation of each xi. So the variance is the deviation squared. So this will be sigma squared plus sigma squared up to sigma squared n times. So we are adding sigma squared n times. What we'll get is n sigma squared. But we don't put this here because what we want is the deviation of this random variable, not its variance. But the standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. This is the root of n sigma squared. And we can split those two up. The root of a product is the product of the individual square roots. This will be root of n times root of sigma squared. Root of n is root of n, but the root of sigma squared is just sigma. So you see you have to be careful. It's not going to be n mu and n sigma. It's n mu root of n sigma is the new standard deviation of this sum. So it is root of n sigma. So that's the result. So if you have n normal random variables that are independent with the same mean and the same deviation, the sum is still normal. The mean is n times the initial mean. The deviation, you have to be careful, is root of n times the deviation of each random variable. And that is a really important theorem. From this theorem, we can derive another really, really important one about the average. What if we computed not the sum of the variables, but their averages? Well, the average, again, is just the sum of the variables over the number of variables. So we will denote this by, if you remember, the average we use in x bar. So we are saying now, form the random variable that is the average of all of the x's random variables. So we would do x1 plus x2 plus up to xn. And we now divide this by n. This will still be normal. So this will still be a normal random variable. And the great thing is we can easily find the mean and the deviation of this random variable from the one we derived for the sum. So if you go back, you see the sum is normal and the mean is n mu. The deviation is root of n sigma. Well. Once we go from here to here, all we do in the average is we divide by n. So we can just divide by n and actually this does work. So n mu, if we do it here, so n mu divided, we divide by n. So n mu over n gives you simply mu. And the deviation here was root of n sigma. And we again divide by n, divide by n. And if you think of it, well, this is root of n sigma, but n is root of n times root of n, and we can cancel one of the roots of n. And we're left with a deviation of sigma divided by the square root of n. And that is the standard deviation for the average of these random variables. So this is now sigma divided by root of n.
And this also is a really important result. So think of it this way. If you remember the sum of the variables is also a normal, where the mean is n mu, the deviation is root of n sigma. When you want the average, divide this by n, this by n, and this by n, and you will get the average follows a normal distribution with a mean of mu, a deviation of sigma over root of n. So beside theoretical results, these, um, as far as theoretical results go, this is really it. In our next video, we'll consider examples where we will ask for the probability of a normal random variable. We will then standardize to make it the standard normal, and then we will read the probabilities from the table of the standard normal distribution.